Today, we're taking a tour of 12 incredible prefab tiny houses that have been designed by AI. By looking at innovative designs and smart functionality features, as well as some sustainable living solutions, maybe we can pull ideas and inspiration for our own tiny homes. My name is Christopher and I'm an architectural designer. I have a passion for sustainability, functionality, and small living solutions. If any of those things interest you, then this is probably a good video for you. Let's begin and start looking at these prefab tiny homes that are designed by AI. There's a couple great aspects about this image that I really like, which is a massive skylight over the exterior porch here and the topographical layering on the panels above the porch. It's also got a perforated wood screen that really doesn't look like it's doing much. It bothers me because it looks like it's just for show, but if it had the capability to slide closed to cover in half of that patio, I think it would work much nicer as like a sunscreen for sunny days or to block out some wind out there in the seemingly Martian landscape. The window on the right hand side has only one pane lit, which leads me to believe that each pane correlates to like some type of compartment inside the tiny home. Possibly that is a closet and a light is turned on in one of the cabinets. I don't know, maybe that's like a sock drawer or something. When it's light outside, the sunlight floods the space so you can happily choose your favorite silly socks under natural light. Sounds cool. It would be interesting to have storage compartments lit from exterior windows rather than interior lighting. I think the way in which this tiny home touches the ground I think is very simple yet very practical. It looks like four jacks and then a simple four stair entry point. The concrete wall gives the structure some texture and it also gives it the feel of something heavy floating atop something light. Something that caught my eye with this tiny home is the possibility that the top window right here can actually slide down and enclose the bottom patio area which opens up the loft up above for good fresh air, some nice sounds, and sunlight. I'm always entertained by dynamic architecture and how static our structures are in modern day. There's a lot of possibilities when we start thinking about how spaces can change throughout the day. Also, it should depend on what we need those spaces to be during specific times of the day. A very clear example of this is a lot of van conversions have a space where you sleep, which then folds into some type of table or couch which can then be like a relaxation space or an office space for somebody who's traveling. I definitely can't move on without mentioning these two peekaboo windows through the concrete here. They are circles, which helps break up the monotony of the orthogonal straight lines of this modern aesthetic. They are slightly offset, which gives me the impression that they're placed according to interior function rather than exterior form. I'll give it a high five for that. And this one, I personally, I'm not too fond of an all white futuristic aesthetic that uses a lot of fiberglass reinforced concrete or white um, aluminum paneling. Take a glance at this video up here if you wanna see what I'm talking about more in depth. Zaha Hadid is a very popular architect or star architect who has capitalized and pioneered this style. Regardless though, this tiny house looks very elegant, it's sophisticated and clean, and it's got a lot of touches of simplicity found throughout it. I'm not sure how this is all happening up here. If it was a slight push out for more interior room, I think it's really great. I can see some type of overhead garden or area for indoor plants going on in there, um, inside those windows, to let a lot of the nice sunlight in. There's actually something really cool about this tiny home I'll share in just a moment, but first let's look at a couple things on the interior. This couch right here is on the ground. This is something that I absolutely love. I know it's kind of weird, but in my culture, it's not common to sit on the ground. Uh, you would probably never sit on the ground. The couch stands out to me because I think it would be an interesting concept to play with. I mean, it's either that or the floor steps down here, uh, almost a whole foot after the entry threshold, which wouldn't be my go-to design, but I can see here that the coffee table and this couch against the window are lowered too. So that might be the case. Anyways, I still enjoy the thought of the couch being directly on the ground and how that opens up a lot of overhead space and also it activates the floor plane. The porch is simple and it gets the job done. I like the mullion placement on the exterior glazing here which helps to accentuate the angular design of the structure. It pulls in the outside walls of like a stereotypical house for a more pronounced stature. So this right here is what I was mentioning earlier on the exterior I found to be really cool. 
It reminds me of the bungee straps that you can find on a lot of backpacks or watercrafts that are used for storage or connection points. I think this concept can be applied in other areas of tiny homes. I like the placement of the vegetation on this tiny home a lot and the slight cutaway of the entry space, with the overhead still extending over some of, over some of the porch for protection. The material palette is creative with like two different wood stains for each side of the tiny home, but it is broken apart by light colored brushed steel tubing. So moving on, this one came out a little funky and sometimes this happens when you use AI to design a tiny home, you know, it just, it doesn't get everything right. And sometimes it does something a little funny, but it looks like it's really flooded. I can only see problems coming from that in the future and the overhead condition here isn't doing much for me. Again though, those are more just like technical issues with the AI, but anyways, there's two cool aspects about this design though that I would like to point out, and it's the L-shaped window on the left side, something you really never see. I wanted to point this out because you don't see them often, and if you use them correctly, it can help liven up the architecture. These four wheels are ridiculous. Uh, again, this is a technical issue, but it looks like they're all flat. So the owner is obviously having a hard time. I think that's okay. We all go through hard times, but they are in the middle of a desert, which kind of makes me a little bit worried. But anyways, the second aspect to point out here is the kitchen. It doesn't seem like there's access from the interior except through this back door here, which the chair is actually blocking. I personally wouldn't want to cook with my back to an amazing view, but maybe it's all about when you finish cooking your meal and you turn around and you can sit on the edge there with your feet hanging off and you can enjoy your meal. I feel like this would also help me with getting the dishes back to the sink um, because I'm pretty bad at that. And here the only place to really put your dishes is maybe on that rock over there. These lights up here are great. They just remind me of those fairy lights that everybody had hanging all over their college dorms about eight years ago. But maybe this is like the grown up version for that. Um, the lighting in this image is amazing. And I love the slightly yellow light that's emanating from the interior of the building and it's illuminating the wet asphalt on the outside. I think the connection of these two having this very warm light pushing outwards into the city is very beautiful. The stairs are nicely crafted and the planners out front do a good job of breaking up the undesirable view from underneath the um, tiny home. I'm not totally sure why they would need four door handles or locks. Uh, it must not be a really safe city, but the ground level windows aren't really helping too much with privacy. That's like for sure. Don't get me wrong though, I do like these windows and this tiny house and something to point out is this like, push out or extrusion on the side. Again, the variation of materials here are all right with me in this instance, although it's starting to look a little bit like the interior of like McDonald's, where I swear their leading designers are having a competition to see how many different kinds of materials they can jam into one fast food joint. McDonald's is the one I know is really bad at it, but pretty much any fast food joint these days, go into their dining room and just look around. They have at least like 40 to 60 different kinds of materials stuck to the walls, stuck to the chairs, stuck to the tables. Everything is like a different material. It's a mess. If you enjoy videos about tiny homes or small living solutions, and you can't quite find a video that works for you, let me know in the comments down below what type of video you would like to see. I'm always open to suggestions on this channel. Also remember to like the video if you've liked the video so far and let's continue to look at these tiny homes. This could be one of my favorite tiny houses in this video because of a lot of different factors, but the form of the home is very organic and it's still slightly having the shape of an extruded house which in my opinion is one of the most overused design moves I've ever seen, but in this case it's doing a little bit more because it's organic and it flows better. The glazing or the windows is set slightly in from the exterior of the building as a shell tapers off to a point which smooths out the edges between the exterior and the interior. This is great because it allows the sunlight to flood in along the interior of the shell rather than cast very hard shadows. The windows are fun and they remind me of oversized RV windows. They're simply a square window that has filleted edges or curved edges. There are skylights popping through sporadically around the roof, which is very playful and fun. And the building looks like it's very lightly touching the ground on some small angled supports. Also, I have to note here that this elevated porch is amazing. 
It has a tapered top edge moving downward, which continues through to a tapered steel edge, which then terminates above the ground, giving it the appearance that it's floating. Check out these two steps that are very organic and resemble sectioned like pebbles or something like a tree stump rather than a square stepping stone. I enjoy this a lot because they match the look and feel of the tiny home very well. This one is a more simple version and we've seen plenty of tiny homes like this. I would say it's more of like a mainstream aesthetic in what people are looking for when they opt to purchase like a tiny home or when they want to build their own. Once again, we have the outline of a house, uh, very simple. I still feel like it's overused, but don't get me wrong, I understand it's a practical shape because it sheds water and provides four straight vertical walls. That's cool, but let's put our creative minds to some use and have more fun with the interior programming, which will then hopefully change the shape of the building. Form follows function, right? If I had one word for this image, it would be Pinterest. Check it out. We got a tiny house on the corner of an intersection. It doesn't look very safe. It wouldn't be the ideal living environment with the tiny home, especially if trucks are passing by quickly, but it is a nice structure that radiates the feeling of hominess. Homeliness? Homeliness. Hominess. Either one sounds good to me. The planner above the window is really nice, and the textured curtain on the exterior of the front door here is a great idea to give your entryway a softer touch. I can imagine it's nice to have a door open with the curtain closed during the summer months to allow the fresh air in while minimizing the line of sight from pedestrians on the street into your home. This could obviously be done with a simple screen door, but there's something more poetic about having a curtain that gives life to the air as it moves through it. Textiles and architecture are great because they tend to give life and presence to energy that we don't typically see or appreciate. For instance, a nice breeze or the air coming into our home. Number 10 on our list is somewhat similar to nine, but the siding looks like some type of metal and the side window has louvers on it, which can function very well to preventing light from entering in the building during certain seasons or during times of the day. This is a subject that's well worth looking into, which is called passive solar design. And if you want to learn more about sustainable window placement and shading design, let me know in the comments below. Also, please drop down there which one of these tiny homes has been your favorite so far. Sometimes we go overboard with lighting, and I really do appreciate the two simple overhead LEDs on the front porch. If it's an area that isn't used often, then having two simple lights like that can show outsiders that you don't really want anybody coming, you don't want any visitors, you don't want anybody to knock. Whereas a bright light turned on, a front porch light, it makes your house or your home seem much more welcoming to people. The smaller LED lights use less energy too, which is great for tiny homes. Second to last on our list is this tiny house that has a floor to ceiling glass wall that has a very nice, thin, minimalist frame. On top of that, it has a very minimal interior design as well. The front door or the entry door looks like it would be this glass pane right here, but I don't think that's it. It looks like AI just, it looks like the AI just kind of messed it up a little bit, but if I were to put a door here, I wouldn't make it that glass pane. I would push it a little bit further back like you see here, and then I would have it almost hidden inside of that wall. And I would hide the door because I would want people to focus on the glass pane and the nice glass windows. That would typically draw people's eyes. The two skylights above have what would likely be an electric powered shading device, giving you the ability to close out the sun if you need to. And last but not least on our list of prefabricated tiny homes designed by AI is this fella. I can't say there's much about this design at all that I really like other than the stairway seems to be shifting upwards from the ground. It's like bending and breaking almost as if it's growing, which blends nicely with the landscape and the windows on the side of the structure seems like it almost folds outwards to let in some cross ventilation. Like the video if you've liked the video and subscribe down below if you want to see future content just like this. Over there are two videos that I think you'll really like, and right next to me is a list of patrons from Patreon. If you become a patron, you get a lot of cool architecture-related benefits, 
and your name gets featured at the end of the video like these amazing people right here. Regardless though, I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next video.